If it's making news in the capital, it'll be on London tonight in 30 minutes. This is Carlton, Television for London. Now, news at 10. Joe Andrews has been looking into just where the money comes from. 
at issue today has been exactly who gave what to Tory party funds. Attention has centred around money gathered from foreigners who have no vote here. Today the party's former head of communication said many ministers helped gather the cheques. All of the party leaders, not just the Prime Minister, the leader of the party, but other people who go abroad, are aware of the need to raise funds and of the fact that there are many more funds available in other parts of the world than there are in the United Kingdom. So far, Conservatives have admitted Azul Nadir's gifts to the party. Haitian has been able to confirm another foreign donor was Octave Botner, former chairman of Nissan UK. An arrest warrant for him has been issued here. He's now in Switzerland for medical reasons. The Hong Kong property millionaire Lee Kya Shing also gave his compatriot Sir Y.K. Pao, now dead, was a long-term benefactor dating back to the 70s. The Greek shipping millionaire John Latsis, acquitted of collaborating with the Nazis, was generous too, giving up to £2 million. The party's former treasurer specifically defended Mr Latsis's contribution when ITN spoke to him in Venice last week. It seemed perfectly legitimate, uh, and I still would defend that uh, to the death, uh, 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 the right of Mr. Latsis or anybody else who cares to take a, uh, uh, an interest in our, uh, our country to support our political parties. ITN has been told the party chairman has the precise details of all donations on the central office computer. He could end the speculation tonight, but Sir Norman Fowler insists they must remain private. Joe Andrews, News at 10, Westminster. Well, now for the latest on the political funding debate, we can go over to Michael Brunson. Michael, what's been happening in the chamber tonight? Oh, the shouting and the screaming and the mayhem has gone on to the very end. And one of the points that's been picked up is the point that Jo Andrews was mentioning in her report, and it specifically is about the case of Lee Ka Shing, the Hong Kong billionaire. Now, uh, Tony Newton, the leader of the House, has just got up and said that the source for a lot of those stories is a magazine called Business Age. And Business Age is going to print in its next issue, he said, an apology to Lee ka because the magazine had suggested that Mr. Lee ka had uh, wanted some favours in return for his donation. And uh, he made a great deal of that. Ah, oh, well then, said Robin Cook, jumping to his feet. He said, uh, that's all right, uh, but he doesn't answer the question, does it, about whether Mr. Lee ka gave some money or not. Come on, Mr. Newton, tell the House, did he or did he not give the money? And Mr. Newton then turned it back and said, oh, well, that's typical of Labour, they always repeat the original allegation. So this essential question of whether the Tories are, are going to reveal the sources or are not still remains open and all the signs are that the Tories are going to tough it out and say they're not going to reveal these individual donations. Their tactics throughout this debate have been very much to go on the offensive. Do you think that's been successful? Well, for the moment it's holding the line. The interesting thing is, of course, that also it applies to Mr Michael Mates. Mr Mates is now, in my view, clearly going to hold on to his job and it's interesting that the tactic seems to work because a lot of the more senior backbenchers Tory backbenchers coming back to the Commons today are saying, well, look, if the Prime Minister's got confidence in him, well, as far as we're concerned, this matter of borrowing a car is over. So, for the moment, it looks as though Mr Mates is safe. Michael Brunson, thank you very much. Rosyth Dockyard in Fife has made a cut price offer for refitting Trident submarines to try to make sure that it, and not Devonport, gets the contract. Rosyth has almost halved its bid to around £70 million. A Cabinet subcommittee will discuss the tenders tomorrow. A final decision was expected at full Cabinet on Thursday. Ministry of Defence sources said tonight it was unreasonable to lower the offer so late after months of discussion. The managing director at Rosyth said it was a legitimate tactic. Well, I do believe there's a political bias against Rosyth. Uh, we want to make absolutely certain either we win all counts. As far as I'm concerned, this should clinch.